death is where he resides. Hunting them at the far reaches of the Earth and beyond. And with him lies our salvation. There is only one dominant life form in this universe, and it carries a steel barreled sword of vengeance. Welcome home, Great Slayer. So I guess this is it. It was a fun year and a half speculating about Doom Eternal. This will be the last trailer analysis for the game until the first DLC gets revealed. The new Doom Eternal launch trailer was epic AF and out of all of the three official trailers, this was my favorite one. It's just so good. And there are actually a lot of things hidden in this trailer that nobody has talked about. And also things that have confused me as to why they have happened. 70% of the people that watch my videos every single day are not subscribed. So if you enjoy the videos I produce, then please consider subscribing as it is my goal to reach 100k subscribers before the maternal comes out. We are so close to that goal and even if we do not reach it, with this growth we're gonna reach that goal before April begins. Let's get this video to 5,000 likes and thank you all so much for the incredible support. Enjoy the video. Okay, so let's go in chronological order. This titan right here is the Icon of Sin. If you have seen the concept leaks, then you will know that this is the Icon of Sin with his maker armor supplied by the con maker. And also if you zoom in at him, you can see the iconic goat face of the Icon of Sin. A lot of people theorize that this hand was from the Icon of Sin. And well, they were absolutely right. I guess that the titan that was shown in the E3 2019 trailer was also the Icon of Sin, but without his maker armor. Next up, we get a really cool close-up shot of Lucifer's Bane, the super shotgun and a really cool super slow-mo shot. I wonder if all of these shots are taken in-game with photo mode, because if they are, I cannot wait to see the marvelous things that the Doom community will do with photo mode. Next, we get to see the Tower of Babel, with a towering titan shackled to some rocks, with chains and lava coming out from his face. That's actually so metal. And actually, this is just like this concept art, which was revealed a long time ago. We see a shot of the Doomslayer loading his heavy cannon and dumping some micro-missiles into a cyber demon. But wait a second, what is this? Is that Olivia Pierce? Okay, it is her. If we compare her in-game model from Doom 2016 to this statue, her legs, the body, the face, everything coincides. This shot is probably taken in hell, so why is there a statue of Olivia Pierce there? Did she actually accomplish her goal in the events of Doom 2016? And the demons actually gave her immortality in the form of immortalizing her as a statue? I highly doubt this is on a cultist base because of the scenery. This is maybe in hell? or inside of a hell temple on top of a titan. Just like it was shown in the first 10 minutes of Doom Eternal, where towering titan demons carry the temples of priests on their backs to the city to watch the onslaught go on. I do not know, but it is very weird to see a statue of Olivia Pierce, for sure. We then see Yurdek with two statues of the past con makers, or maybe 
from the current one. Being that she is crazy with power, she may be trying to display that power on your deck. And then we see something that was so satisfying. It may be because of the lighting, but this Marauder looks very different than the ones that have been shown so far. His armor is darker and he looks more pale, but I guess that that is just the lighting being different. I will guess that this is taking place on a maker facility, because of the architecture on the background and because of the obvious sleep space device in the middle. Or this is another city of sentinel origin. We then see an in-game shot of the gladiator, and the more you look at it, the more he looks like the original Hell Knight design or sprite from Doom 2 Hell on Earth. We get a close-up of the gift of Origin to Wallard, which is going to be on a Sentinel building. The Makers were a pretty big part of the Sentinel culture at the end of the Sentinel Age, so I understand why the Sentinels will give so much respect to the Makers, even though they are using the Sentinels to pursue even more power more Argent power. Now, this is something very interesting. This is going to be cringy, but I've seen lots of movies and anime to know this. But when they use this type of blurry edit with a soft color palette, it's because the scene is a flashback. I also think this scene is a flashback because we see an unhelified Hell Priest, which I know is Dig Graf, because Dig Graf made an appearance in the demo build I played not so long ago, and he was this Hell Priest. If you compare their armor, it's pretty much the same, so this is Dig Graf when he was still not corrupted by Hell. We can see the con maker in the background. Background seems to be like a type of coliseum of sorts, and we can also see men in the ground full of blood. So, I'm gonna make a wild guess that this is where Doom Guy showed his power in front of the people of Sentinel Prime and the Makers. And this is when he became fit to be a warrior under the wing of the Sentinels. I mean, it is pretty much confirmed that the Doom Slayer is Doom Guy. So, this could be what happened, to be honest. That, or I may be so wrong. Who knows? Then we can see the Doom Slayer facing off a guard in the control panel room of the BFG 10,000. We see him walking in a corridor full of sentinels of the Dig Order, sentinels that are loyal to the Maker race and especially the Con Maker. And we hear someone greet the Slayer. Welcome home, great Slayer. I wonder who that is. He says, Welcome home, Slayer. And the Slayer is on a sentinel slash Maker city. So I'm really curious to know who that is. He's probably a new character. But anyways, then we get a pretty badass sequence. And after that, we get this, the Icon of Sin on his full glory. So we know that the fight with the Icon of Sin is going to have two phases, by what we can tell here. First he's going to have his armor, and the second phase is going to be with his armor off. Because Doom Eternal is a spiritual successor to Doom 2 Hell on Earth, I think that the boss fight with the Icon of Sin is going to have demons in the arena, so we are going to be fighting against the Icon and several demons at once. The Icon also has that hole on his forehead, you can barely see it, but it is there, so I guess that we are going to kill the Icon by stabbing the Crucible there, or something along the lines. Now that we have monkey bars, double jump, dashing and the mid hook, the boss fight against the Icon of Sin is going to be glorious and full of really epic scenes and gameplay mechanics. And finally, just who is the voice that was talking about the Slayer in the trailer? I normally cringe with monologues like this, I even cringe with my voice but what can I do? But not with this one. The voice of this woman is the same voice of the last trailer, talking about how this is humanity's chance to repent. Anyways, whoever this woman talking is, I do not care if she's from Yurdak, Hell, Earth, or even Heaven. 
She is obviously an ally to the Slayer, and she states that there is only one dominant life form in this universe. And this says two things that the Doom Slayer is an absolute chad, and that there are also other universes, reinforcing the multiverse thing in Doom. Thanks for watching. And so, okay, Spotsons, that's all the time I had for today's video. Please let me know what you think about this video down in the comments section, leave a like if you did, and a dislike if you thought it was bad. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing. We are very close to 100k subscribers, and if you love Doom, I'm also gonna be doing more Doom Eternal content post launch. Thanks to all of my patrons who made this video possible, and links to all of my social accounts are going to be down below. Thanks for watching. Adios.